Georgia, it's amazing having you back in LA and so good to see you again. Um, I was thinking the other day, I've actually known you since you were 13. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I cast you for a commercial, a, a, a commercial in um, Hong Kong when you were 13. Mm-hmm. So I was blonde back then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't imagine you blonde. Yes. It's so funny. Um, anyway, it's so good to have you back here. And obviously I have been following your journey for a long time and you've got you're one of the most resilient people that I know and I just brought you in today because I really would like you to share your journey and what happened to you when you were younger and where you are today which is really quite fabulous. All right well I I grew up in a small town small country farm town actually and was doing singing acting dancing from a very young age. When I was 16 I ended up going to America trying to see suss out the industry. I got signed by an incredible management team who had so many huge stars with them and I was kind of starstruck and didn't know what was happening. They really were fond of me. So a few months later, I came back for pilot season. I was still 16. My mum came along it's with me. It's a huge me. deal, right? Yeah, it was a huge <laughs> deal. I didn't even know that that trip would lead to this. And so I was there for three months and I auditioned crazy for blockbusters, for lead roles just it was an honor such an honor that I was even getting in the room and had a management team that believed me and thought I could Could do do this yeah Yeah, and I was so young and just I was I can't even describe it I was so happy that that all happened I had that opportunity dream come true Yeah, yeah it was and for that three months I was so busy auditioning journal general meetings with so many great networks Universal Warner Brothers the everything And then it was great at the time, but when I came back to Australia, it just fizzled out. I don't know what happened to our relationship with the management. It is still to this day, I kind of, it's still up in the air and I haven't. So bizarre. I mean, what a a letdown. It was, it really was. Cause I, from going from all these auditions for huge lead roles, and then going back to kind of nothing. What just happened? Totally. Yeah. Did it affect your confidence? It did. It did because I, I, f- I didn't know why. I was it me? Was it? And I, it was just nothing. Yeah. Okay. So that was, yeah. It kind of it did shatter my con- confidence a little bit, and it was kind of hard to get over, and getting into that, going to adulthood and into that age, and I was like, what just. Did I do something wrong? Am I not a good actor? Like, just doubting myself. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, how did you use that as a positive moving forward? Like, I mean, you're here in LA and you are waiting on your visa and that's that's in, which is really great. Mm -hmm. So how did you kind of use that experience to go forward? I learned a lot from that experience, learning that sometimes people come into your life for a reason and some they give you some opportunities and it sometimes it feels fizzles out and I kind of grew up a lot from that and I think it made me a more confident and wanted to drive and get here a lot more and so now this is like my eighth time back in the states and I keep coming back and forward trying to get here and from that experience it's kind of pushed me into I can do it. I can. It's someone did show belief in me and now I'm over here and I'm doing it on my own. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So Georgia, I think that you are an incredibly smart young businesswoman. I've seen you develop relationships with people in the industry and I think that's a really strong thing for you. Can you tell us a little bit how, what that means to you and how important you think that is in the whole thing? I think being smart in this business is the, it's the most you have to do it. You just have to. And since when I was first came here when I was 16 and now I've kept those contacts, I always have to hassle to kind of see them just so they remember me, just go out for coffee, that kind of general thing, just so they know who you are. And yeah, this girl's still going for it and coming back and forward all the time, showing that dedication and that persistence. And I think that's a huge thing of just maintaining the contacts and network and just continuing that growing that supportive network so when I do come here and move I'm not by myself I have a lot of friends and family that are willing to support and look after me I think 
how genuine you are really is very, very obvious to people as well. And um, you're very genuine about when you contact people and you're not wanting something, you're not after something. You just know that these people and, and, and people you meet, um, you want to get to know them, right? Yeah, I am so intrigued by them. I want to learn as much as I can from them, from their experience in this business. And I love meeting new people and talking and going out to network nights and just getting to know someone. Um, I always kind of, since a young age, spoke to more adults and children. That kind of, I gravitated to adults and just looked up to them and I still do. And just, I just want to know about them. Yeah. And what's your fake radar like? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I have had so many fake friends, um, people that come into your life to try and get into and see what you're actually doing because I think you're making it and going to be someone so they kind of come into your life get try and get information and just grab you and mostly girls yeah mostly girls they're horrible and all because of jealousy because I've kind of stuck it at it for a couple of years and I keep persisting and driving towards this career and once they get what they want, they kind of just leave you in the dumps and pull you down and say horrible things and backstab you, literally, just so they can look better, which is horrible. It's a horrible thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess you got a lot of that growing up in a small town as well, you know. Well, yeah, people didn't understand that the opportunities I had, they kind of, it was a whole completely different world for them because no one from Wangaratta was going to America. Yeah and doing the things I did. So it was kind of, yeah, it was hard. So Georgia, did these people that tried to pull you down make you feel like you weren't good enough? Of course, they would say things that started to go into my head and sometimes I would doubt myself and it kind of bring me down a little bit. And then you just realize that they're not your true friends. They're only there to hurt you so they feel good, yeah. which is horrible. Yeah, of course. Georgia, let's talk about preparation what you do to prepare for whether it be meetings, whether it be like continual training, what have you been doing to prepare these last four years or five years to get yourself LA ready? Well, I, I don't want to waste any time, any money because it's hard. It's a struggle to survive and not, yeah, in money situations. So basically to prepare, I always make sure I know who I'm going to talk to and Google IMDB as much as I can research as much, much as I can, prepare myself just physically, mentally, yeah. make sure I go in there with an open mind. I think that's huge and you have to, very important. Because you don't important. know what you're going to get, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then just be myself. I think it's another huge thing. Just really honestly get wanting to get to know them. Yeah. And I love, I, I do love meetings and preparing myself for things. I kind of what do you do? Like, do you, uh, I guess, well, I mean, you've mentioned you get yourself as ready, you know, as possible, but is there any specific things that you do prior to something really important coming up, whether it be an audition or a, you know? I say a little prayer to the universe <laughs> and thank you, thank them for like the opportunity. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm always in class, taking class, it's acting class, doing voice work, accent work, just to make sure I'm confident and that when I go, I, I give it my all and I'm not going to doubt myself in that audition. I just do it and leave and feel good about it. So Georgia, what do you hope for your future? How do you see it if you're looking <laughs> through a looking glass? Well, firstly, I would love to be living here in LA, having a great supportive network behind me, great team management and be working as an actor. Um, this is where I want to be. I thrive in America. I don't know why it feels like home to me and... I'm so lucky to be here right now and I'm yeah, grateful for every opportunity. Great. Georgia, thank you so much for being here and for coming in and chatting, us to, chatting to us today. Um, yeah, your story will really resonate with a lot of people and um, I just want to thank you and I w want to wish you amazing luck and great fortune going forward and I know that without a doubt that you know there's some incredible things coming up for you, so thank you. Thank you, Lily.